squirrels throng the city streets today in a quest for nuts as local supplies have literally dwindled to nothing. With all sources running dry, our furry-tailed friends are cruel victims of what can only be described as the worst nut drought in living memory. set the world record in Bernstein's book of the world's weirdest feats, Billy Hammerstein of Topanga Falls is currently constructing the world's biggest peanut butter sandwich. It seems he is solely responsible for Peanut Crisis 2003. So if you're missing nuts, blame Billy. <laughs> fell short of making it into Bernstein's book of world's weirdest feats. This feat has already been accomplished by Arnold Glatt of Beaver Creek. But Billy did manage to create the largest gathering of squirrels on a single plot of land. Good for you, Billy. Thank you. 
Welcome back. Nothing to worry about, just a bit of a bump on your head. Just take it easy for a day or two. Just relax and watch some TV. This ice pack might make your brain go numb, but don't worry, that's normal. Welcome to When Park Animals Turn Unpleasant. Our subject today is the park pigeon. Whilst acknowledged as one of nature's most beautiful creations, park pigeons are nevertheless ruthless, unpredictable, even unstable. Some people take the view that park pigeons are no more than dangerous killing machines which systematically infiltrate new territory to wipe out competitors. Feed such creatures in the park as they are sinister and evil. Park pigeons are not nice or kind. They also smell like cabbage. The worst of it is the way they bob their heads, taunting us, I mean, taunting people. And that is the end of this episode of When Park Animals Turn Unpleasant. This has been a paid program brought to you by the world's dog. Scary Time Stories. And now, part three of the evening play. Ronaldo is depressed at having no friends. As a dark loneliness sets in, all he can do is stay in, eat unimaginative food, and listen to earnest plays on the radio. If only he had company. so frightened. Anything could happen to me and no one would ever know because I'm so alone. Looking for the emu. He's away on vacation. Swapped his apartment for ten days holiday with his friends in Australia. Sounds good in the brochures, but you never know who's gonna be in your apartment while you're away. Could be a party animal. Maybe a pack of koala bears. Or even a nature show host. Or a wild boar. I don't know. Could be a pack of orangutans out looking for fun on a Saturday night. Toucans. Hippos.
I must have been dreaming. What a horrible nightmare. Come on, no, no, no. Stop imagining things. Be strong. There's no one else here. It's just your crazed and lonely imagination. of you who have nothing better to do this Saturday night, we present an evening of documentaries celebrating the history of cement manufacturing. You are the bunny? That's good. We can start. I'm your organizer for this evening. This may seem like just a normal, regular, everyday kind of evening filled with fun and frolic. But something sinister could happen at any moment. I hope you will all choose to enjoy some snacks that were skillfully made by our hostess tonight. Um, that llama over there. What has happened to the canapes? Right. Nobody leave this apartment. You're all suspects. I can tell you now that one of you here is a dirty, low-down scoundrel. was Mr. Bunny in the sitting room with the carrot canopy. Oh, that was the most intriguing mystery yet. Next month it will be held at, um, the Mangoose's apartment.
I'm Yolanda Adams, and I'm coming to you live from the beach. The search for the missing bunny continues. It really is a mystery as to where he could have disappeared. The marmots that he was hanging out with are expecting the worst. Rescue crews are gearing up with flippers to search the ocean bed. This is Yolanda Adams, back at the beach. The rescue crews are attempting to find that lost and probably waterlogged bunny. They have called in reserve rescuers to help search the rough waters.